Welcome. Most people know divisibility rule for the number 11, but aren't sure why it's actually true. I'd like to go through it here. Uh, just to get us going, let's, let's go through what the rule is. Uh, suppose I'd like to know whether the number, say, 23,815 is divisible by 11. Well, the claim is, add the digits, but in an alternating fashion. That is, place plus or minus signs between the digits and end up this way. So I'll go plus 2, minus 3, plus 8, minus 1, plus 5. Let's work out that sum. 2 minus 3 is negative 1, plus 8 is 7, uh, minus 1 is 6, plus 5 is 11. And the claim is if the answer here is a multiple of 11, which it is, that means the original number was also a multiple of 11. Uh, let's do another one. Suppose I want to do something like 1, 3, 3, 3, 6, 6, 2. Uh, let's do the alternating sum. Plus 1, minus 3, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus. Let's look at that. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. Plus 3, minus 3, I'm not going to worry about. Plus 6, minus 6, I'm not going to worry about. So it's negative 2 at the beginning. Plus 2 makes 0. That's a multiple of 11. So the claim is the original number is a multiple of 11. In fact, there's something interesting here. If you believe this rule, then we actually now know, whoops, where did that come from? That every palindromic number with an even number of terms is going to have to be a multiple of 11. For example, 4, 2, 3, 3, 2, 4. I claim if this rule is true, that must be multiple of 11. Plus 4, minus 2, plus 3, minus 3, plus 2, minus 4. Well, it's plus 4 and minus 4. It's minus 2 and plus 2. It's plus 3, minus 3. It's going to give an alternating sum of 0, which is always going to be a multiple of 11. Uh, which is a multiple of 11, so it means the original is always a multiple of 11, at least for an even number of terms in a palindrome. All right, why is this rule true? Well, it's all based on the fact that we like to work an arithmetic system that's based on powers of 10. So let's look at the various powers of 10 and see how they behave upon division by 11. So here's 1, 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, and so forth. And let's look at their remainders upon division by 11. Well, dividing by 11, 1 doesn't do much. Um, 0 is the closest multiple of 11, and this is 1 more than that, so it leaves a remainder of 1. 10 upon division by 11 doesn't do much either. It leaves a remainder of 10. But I'm actually going to be sneaky. 10 happens to be 1 below a multiple of 11. So if you like, I could think of a remainder as 10 as the same as, the remain as a remainder of negative 1, with 1 below a multiple of 11. Hmm, kind of funky. 100. 100 happens to be 1 more than 99, and 99 is a multiple of 11. So this leaves a remainder of 1 upon division by 11. 1,000. Now it's getting hard. It turns out 999 is not a multiple of 11, so this doesn't leave a remainder of 1. And I'm not quite sure how to think about it. Or actually, I, I, I've got a trick. Look at this number 10. We said 10 leaves a remainder of negative 1. 100 is actually 10 times 10. So upon division by 11, this is the same as a remainder of negative 1, that's 10, times negative 1, which indeed is pos positive 1. 1,000 is actually 10 times 10 times 10, 10 cubed. So that leaves the same remainder upon division by 11 as negative 1 cubed, which is negative 1. There we go. 10,000, that's 10 to the 4th. That's going to leave the same remainder as negative 1 to the 4th, positive 1, and so on. 100,000, 10 to the 5th, leaves the same remainder as negative 1 to the 5th, negative 1. So it looks like the powers of 10 leave remainders of 1, negative 1, 1, negative 1, 1, negative 1, and so on in an alternating fashion. Hmm, curious. All right, so let's take a number like 8,426. That is really 8 groups of 1,000, and 4 groups of 100, and 2 groups of 10, and 6 groups of 1. Upon division by 11, 1,000 leaves the same thing as negative 1. And 100 leaves the same remainder as 1. And 10 leaves the same remainder as negative 1. And 1 leaves the same remainder as 1. So this really leaves the same remainder upon division by 11 as 8 groups of negative 1, negative 8, and 4 groups of 1, positive 4, and 2 groups of negative 1, negative 2, and 6 groups of positive 1, 6. Uh, 6, there we go. That is, it's at least the same remainder as 8 minus 4, that's negative 4, minus 2 plus 6, which is 0. Therefore, 8, 4, 2, 6 must have been a multiple of 11. Uh, let me do another one, um, one that's not quite as nice. Let's do 894. Upon division by 11, this is 8 groups of 100. That's 8 groups of uh, 100. What is that? It's positive 1. That's positive 8, 8 groups of 1, plus 9 groups of 10, 9 groups of negative 1, plus
plus 4 groups of 1 plus 4. This leaves the same remainder as uh, 8 minus 1 plus 4, that is the same remainder as 3. Now, that means it's not a multiple of 11, but actually this shows me the rule tells me more. I did not get 0 here or a multiple of 11, but I do know upon division by 11, this number leaves a remainder of 3. So the divisory rule actually tells me something interesting. Now, there's one little danger here uh, that most people don't think of. Eight, look, go back to this first example, 8, 4, 2, 6. Notice how when I presented the work, I had to go negative 8 plus 4 minus 2 plus 6 because the, the units have to be plus 1s. The tens have to be negative 1s. Most people don't do that. They would go 8 minus 4 plus 2 minus 6. That's okay. And they'd still get the answer 0. They'll just be off by minus sign and they might think, okay, it was a multiple of 11, we're fine. That's fine in that context. But if I actually want to know what the remainder is, I've got to be careful that I start off correctly. For example, here goes. Let me clear the space. Uh, my board is very messy right now. Let's look at the example, say, uh, oops, let's change the pen color because I'm tired of that green. 4,251. Most people would go plus 4, minus 2, plus 5, minus 1. That's fine. And say this is equivalent to uh, 4 minus 2 is uh, 2, plus 3 is 7, minus 1, 6. So it's not a multiple of 11. I didn't get 0 or a multiple of 11 here. However, uh, the remainder upon division by 11, I'm afraid, is not 6. If I was to think of this carefully, this is 4 groups of 1,000, plus 2 groups of 100, plus 5 groups of 10, plus 1 group of 1. This should be negative 1, this should be plus 1, this should be negative 1, this should be plus 1. So actually the same, it's the same remainder as negative 4 plus 2 minus 5 plus 1, which I'm afraid is actually now negative 6. So upon division by 11, this number actually leaves a remainder of negative 6. That's the same thing as saying as a remainder of 5. So if you want to get into this fussiness, you need to make sure that when you put in the, the alternating signs, your final digit ends with a plus sign here. If you're only interested in, the, in a yes-no question, is it a multiple of 11 or not, you need not worry about that fussiness. There we are. That's multiples of 11 for you. I have another video of other divisibility rules. You can do some good crazy things, but I just focused on 11 here. Thanks.